So I've got about 10 minutes to explain why I think one of the most well-funded, thoroughly researched, and popular ideas in all of physics in the last 70 years or so is getting way more attention than it deserves. Call me crazy, but I think that'll be easier than it sounds. But I still better get right down to it. I'll be keeping things simple and math-free, as much for my own sake as yours. So don't worry if you're not a math nut, and I'll try to keep the jargon down to a minimum and explain any terms as I go. But if I jump over an explanation, or the explanation just sucks, feel free to ask me to clarify in the comments, and I'll do my best. Let me start by stating right up front that string theory is complex, interesting, and possibly accurate, but it's not a theory as most scientists would use the word, and the way it's been studied has been detrimental to progress in physics for at least 30 years or more. I guess I'll kick things off by explaining just what string theory is. And string theory is actually kind of a misnomer, really, because it's not a theory at all. In a, in a nutshell, when you get right down to brass tacks, it is a collection of hypotheses that all try to take general relativity and the four fundamental forces of gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces. In other words, classical physics, the, the big stuff, so to speak. And it combines that with the perplexing physics of particles and quantum mechanics, aka very tiny stuff, and attempts to explain how it all might work if, instead of particles being the base of physics, everything was instead made of tiny strings vibrating at different frequencies to create what we observe as particles, the forces, and by extension, everything. The problem is, it doesn't have a lot of practical use, even in terms of theoretical physics. While there is definitely a lot of serious math that goes into these potential theories, and it seems from everything I've read so far that it tends to have internal mathematical consistency, I'm nowhere near qualified to comment on the math itself. Thankfully though, it's not really relevant for understanding my main point today, so I won't worry about the nitty gritty details other than to say that if you do read up on the actual math, you may experience what I can only call a brain explosion and that when it comes right down to it, so far, they have no connection at all with anything in the practical world and aren't testable in any practical way. Partially because there's really no such thing as the string theory. There's no single string theory that you can point to and say, that there, that's a coherent string theory. All you really can do is point to an infinite, or at least close to infinite, it's still kind of debatable, number of potential theories and say one of those might be a coherent version of string theory. That's because there's no current way to test most of what any theory involving strings has to say about how the universe works. Most of them rely on tweaking small variables to fit better with observation, but are completely untestable on their own. And they all involve things that have not been observed or shown to be even theoretically necessary for any reason other than to make the theory internally consistent such as extra-physical dimensions. While it's certainly possible that one of these theories could be right, they just aren't testable, and as such don't really fit the usual definition of the word theory. Totally untestable, but wicked cool idea would be more appropriate in my opinion. Putting it somewhere between the useful but not fully understood model of gravity and the batshit insane time cube guy on the scale of scientific theories where it's very interesting and internally consistent, but doesn't have much in the way of real implications for science outside of the theory itself, as explained elegantly by this comic from XKCD. Even still, all that is completely fine as far as I'm concerned. You can't expect to learn new things, especially in physics, without throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. The problems only start creeping in when it comes down to the politics of how research grants are funded which is to say, irrationally. For decades, research grants and teaching positions in physics have been dominated by string theory. If you study anything else, say loop quantum gravity, for example, then you're far less likely to get a decent position anywhere, which means less work is being done on anything other than string theory. This makes it far hard, harder to find truly useful theories that can make testable claims, which is bad even if those other theories end up being shown to be false, because why they are false can give rise to better theories, or even help expand and clarify string theory to the point that it may at least become testable in some way. Physics research programs today share a sort of 
eerie parallel with the dark times when most people thought the earth was flat or the universe revolved around us. And in that, they base their decisions for what gets the most funding almost entirely on personal bias and a desire to see a particular theory win out in the end. But all that does is put a serious damper on real progress and is just plain divisive. It's a bad cycle to get into where students are pushed towards studying string theory and after years of study they start making the decisions about who gets funded and for what kind of research and have a bias towards string theory due to it being their life's work and so on and so forth. The string theory versus anything else issue can be so polarizing that animosity can brew between physicists that can get downright intense all about untested and potentially untestable ideas which is just nuts when it's coming out of a group of people that are literally spending their lives attempting to discover truths about how the universe works. For an example of just that kind of animosity, here is a clip from the Big Bang Theory. Leonard, you're my friend. And friends support their friends, apparently. So I'm withdrawing my objection to your desire to have a relationship with Leslie. Thank you. I will graciously overlook the fact that she is an arrogant, subpar scientist who actually believes loop quantum gravity better unites quantum mechanics with general relativity than does string theory. <laughs> you kids have fun. Hang on a second. Loop quantum gravity clearly offers more testable predictions than string theory. I'm listening. Amuse me. <laughs> okay, well, for one thing, we expect quantized space-time to manifest itself as minute differences in the speed of light for different colors. Balderdash. Matter clearly consists of tiny strings. Are you gonna let him talk to me like that? Okay, well, there's a lot of merit to both theories. No, there isn't. Only loop quantum gravity calculates the entropy of black holes. <laughs> Sheldon, don't make that noise. It's disrespectful. I should hope so. It was a snort of derision. <laughs> You agree with me, right? Loop quantum gravity is the future of physics. Sorry, Leslie. I guess I prefer my space stringy, not loopy. Well, I'm glad I found out the truth about you before this went any further. Truth? What truth? We're talking about untested hypotheses. It's no big deal. Oh, it isn't really? Tell me, Leonard, how will we raise the children? I, I guess we wait until they're old enough and let them choose their own theory. We can't let them choose Leonard, they're children! Wait, where are you going? I'm sorry. I could have accepted our kids being genetically unable to eat ice cream or ever get a good view of a parade. But this? This is a deal breaker. So, to truly make progress in the field of physics, we have to learn to avoid the pitfalls of pushing too hard on untestable claims through diligent use of Occam's razor. In other words, push for more focus on potentially testable theories and theories with some connection to practical physics and less on untestable, though admittedly interesting, ideas. There is certainly room for both, and both are necessary for progress, but the focus definitely needs to shift from its current state, in my opinion. We have to push out personal bias and find a balance that allows for diverse thinking, or we risk stunting progress further than we already have. And one major step in that direction, I think, is to push string theory off the pedestal it's been on for decades and allow for more testable and thus falsifiable ideas to have a serious go at some funding for a while. The great thing about testable theories is as soon as they fail a test, they either have to update themselves to be more likely accurate, or they have to be replaced altogether. If string theory is allowed to run rampant through the physics departments of the world in its current and untestable state, there is no telling how long it might sit there stagnating and pushing away other ideas that might otherwise have led to great discoveries. Why should you care about what universities and physics think tanks are researching in their physics departments, though? Because putting the focus on untestable claims with little to no connection with the practical world is, to be blunt, a waste of time and money time and money that could be spent on ideas much more likely to lead to progress in many aspects of science. And in the world of popular science and school curricula, public opinion holds a lot of weight. There's really no better way to force people making funding choices at universities around the globe to think twice about allowing their personal bias to leak into their decision making than a well-informed public. And hopefully I've helped you become just a little more informed today.
Thank you.